Hello everyone and welcome to another episode. In this video today I'm going to be doing a um, tips on how to catch more fish on crankbaits. You know I think crankbaits are kind of hit and miss with a lot of people. A lot of people love to throw them and then there's also a lot of people that don't like to throw them. And I think that's because either people haven't had that much success on them or they don't understand how to fish them or they just haven't had a lot of bites on them. So um, you know, crankbait fishing is my favorite way to catch bass. Um, it's what I have most confidence in out of any technique. It's I've caught a lot of big fish on crankbaits too, and um, I'm just going to share a couple tips today that I use to get more bites on them and catch a lot of big fish. So if you guys stay tuned and enjoy our show. So the first thing that crankbait fish in, I think, is the rod. That's the most important thing, I think, in crankbait fishing, because a lot of people think, well, you have a bunch of hooks on there. You have usually six to nine hooks on them um, and a lot of people think that's going to be super hard there's no way a fish can throw that when they first start out crankbait fishing actually crankbaits are probably one of the easiest lures for a bass to throw when they jump or shake their head or whatever and um, there's a couple reasons for that the first reason is a lot of people don't use the right rod and what I mean by the right rod you gotta use a pretty um, forgiving rod you know I like to use glass rods um, you know, just a regular glass rod, and the reason for that is these rods are really shock absorbing. They have a really parabolic bend to them, and what that does when that fish jumps or shakes his head or whatever, um, this rod is going to absorb a lot of that shock. So it's not going to give that fish something very stiff to get a lot of leverage to thread those hooks on, and back to what I was saying before a lot of people think well there's like six hooks on them sometimes more um, how are you there's gonna be you're gonna hook them a lot more better than like a jig or something like that but the reason that they're easier to throw for a bass is because they're all the pressure from your from you reeling and from you setting the hook it's all divided from six different points nine different points however many treble hooks you're using um, all that pressure is divided on each one of those actual hooks on the treble hook. So whereas if you just have a jig or a regular worm hook, Texas rigging, when you set the hook and keep the pressure on them, it's all the pressure is just on one little point. So you're going to get a lot more pressure on that one point to keep that hook, that fish hooked. Whereas with a treble hook, it's all divided among however many trebles you're using. So that's something a lot of people don't think about and they wonder why they throw a lot of fish and that's why. Um, now if you use a glass rod are you gonna always never ever throw a fish again? You never ever gonna lose a fish when he jumps? No. Um, it's just a part of fishing but it's gonna cut down your lost fish a lot because it just absorbs that shock when he jumps and keep him hooked. So you know, that's a big thing. That's probably the most important thing when you start out crankbait fishing is have the right rod. And now it doesn't have to be a glass rod, just for me, confidence, I like glass rods. Um, although I do have a couple crankbait rods that aren't glass, and they work really well, but for me, I just like the glass rods probably the best. And, um, you know, I like to stay a, at least seven foot uh, or, be, or beyond for crankbait fishing. Seven foot is really... It's really what I like, seven foot, seven and a half. If I'm going really deep, I like to use seven and a half. Um, another thing is a line. Now, normally, I'm going to be using 12 pound fluorocarbon, sometimes 10. But normally, we're 95%, of, well, not that much, but probably around 75% of the time, I'm going to be using um, 12 pound line. And most of the time, that's for medium divers to deep divers. Now, and square bills. Now, if I'm fishing square bills in cover, which I do a lot, that's one of my favorite ways to fish, is bounce the square bills off of wood, rock, stuff like that. That's where I'm going to up it to 15 pound line. Why? Is because fish, you're 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 cranking through some heavy stuff. You're cranking through some wood and rocks, and when you get a big fish on, he's gonna a lot of times try to wrap you up in that stuff. So you're gonna need that extra pound test line so you cannot break that fish off and so you can get him out of there. So that's when I use 15 pound line. Um, you know, as far as lines go, I like to use fluorocarbon just because I get a little bit more depth out of it um, and stuff like that. And I get a little bit more abrasion resistant out of it, stuff like that. Um, you know, I don't like to use braid on my crankbaits, although you can, or mono. 
Um, but most of the time I'm going to be using fluorocarbon. Yeah. So now we're going to get into lures. So I hope you guys stay tuned. And so you know, as far as lures go, um, there's not that much um, into using the right lure. If you just keep in mind of some important facts is you want to match your type of bill. Your bill is probably the most important thing on a square bill um, for the actual bait wise. Um, the bill is what I would use to dictate what kind of crankbait I'm going to throw. If I'm using a crankbait that's in shallow water that I want to bounce off of rocks and wood and just cover, I'm going to be using this guy right here. This is a square bill. Now, see how that bill is really wide and it's shaped like a square. That's going to help that square bill when it's going along, bounces off, it's going to help it go like that and just come over the wood and it's not it's going to keep those treble hooks protected so it doesn't hang up and a lot of times you hear me talk about this a lot on my um, channel a lot of times when that square bill bounces off of wood or rock even if you're ripping it through weeds when that different flash comes about those fish jump on that bait a lot and you hear me talk about that a lot but I cannot stress enough how many fish I've caught doing that and that's my favorite way to fish is right there um, you know another important thing about crankbaits is the color and matching the color to your to the like the clarity of the water that you're fishing is a very important thing to do another thing um, to do about color is using a unique color and, and this is very important um, you know a lot of fish see the really popular colors like the chartreuses you know the shad colors and stuff like that but um, getting a custom paint lure like this salt fork tackle um, crankbait, it's really a good way to up your chances of catching those finicky fish because those finicky fish, they're going to see a lot of those colors that a lot of people throw. So it just makes sense to use a custom color to get a lot more bites. So if you can see that, you don't see a lot of baits look like this. This is a custom color and you can just tell that that color might make a fish react that wouldn't react to a bait that he's seen go by him, especially in pressured situations. Um, that's just a great color. This is a chartreuse color, and you know, it's got the diamond pattern on it. You know, these baits, these are starting to be one of my favorite baits for crankbait fishing. Um, you know, I really like that they come with already good hooks, and you don't have to, um, you don't have to change out the hooks like a lot of stuff. These come with quality Gamagatsu hooks, which is really the hook that I use 95% of the time. Um, they come with good split rings on them, realistic eyes if you can see that. Um, and they're just ready to go out of the pack and they catch a lot of fish. So that's a great color. You know, another color I like to use is like an actual color that looks like the Forge. This is a bluegill color. This is a salt for custom baits, again. Um, if you can see that, that looks just like a bluegill. It's really nice. A lot of detail. A lot of times when these baits are mass produced, like a KVDs and um, some other lures, I find a lot of times that they kind of um, sometimes, this is not, not always, but a lot of times when baits are mass produced, you can find a lot of times if you look on the stomach, which is where it happens most, right up under these bills, a lot of times it'll be cut the paint will not come all the way in contact with the bill. Um, just because they're mass producing, they're gonna have a lot of flaws. But these baits, if you can see that, pay a lot of attention to detail. Now, a lot of mass produced baits, you don't see that. And that's what I believe makes a lot of fish react to them, is how these baits are really detailed, really unique colors, and th that's just what I think when I'm fishing pressured fish, I like to use a lot of custom colors just because a lot of times I can make those fish react because they've seen a lot of the other stuff. So just using a color that's custom painted is a really good way to catch those finicky fish. 